Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel's Making with Marilyn. Now I do all things crafty, but on today's video, I want to introduce you to the rhinestone tool in Silhouette. Now there's three versions of Silhouette that allow you to make rhinestone templates. The Designer Edition, the Designer Plus Edition, and the Business Edition. But the only one of these that allows you to save your files as SVGs is the Business Edition. Well, I don't cut with a Silhouette, I cut with a Cricut, so I have to be able to save mine as SVGs so that I can pull them into Cricut. So for that reason, I use the Business Edition. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go over here to the Shapes panel and I'm gonna select this bell. And I'm using it just to kind of demonstrate how the rhinestone panel works. Now I can go right over here to this thing that looks like a diamond, click on it, and that opens my rhinestone panel. Now for me, and I assume it's the same in all Silhouette software, when I click on that rhinestone panel, mine's defaulted to no rhinestones, size 10SS rhinestones, and that's what I usually use, and a spacing of 0.039. We're gonna play with this in a little bit so you'll see what this does. So let's go up and put rhinestones around the edge of my bell. I'll click on that, and there they are. Now you can leave them transparent, but for me, I like to change them a color. It's just easier to visualize my design that way. So I clicked on this pretty purple. Now I have to go back to the rhinestone panel. The first thing that I notice is my bell is kind of wide and short. So I'm gonna grab it right here and drag it down. Now notice right now I'm using 96 rhinestones. As I make this bigger or taller, the rhinestone sizes stay the same, which you want, but now we have 122 rhinestones in the design. Now to me, that spacing looks good, but if you don't like it, you can increase the spacing. So look what happens when I change that to 0.05, they get further apart. If I change it to 0.08, they get even farther apart. Okay, so we started at 0.039, let's go back to there. Let's say you want them closer together. Let's go down to 0 0.02. And when I hit enter, you'll see those really get close together. Now for me, that's a little bit close. That's kind of tough for the Cricut to cut. So for now, I'm going back to 0 0.03. Now if all you want is the perimeter and rhinestones, we're done. However, I want to really bling this out, so I have two options. I can do linear fill, and you can see from the picture, in linear fill, the rhinestones are very much in straight lines, straight horizontal lines, and they're evenly spaced. Then you also have a radial fill. Radial fill is really nice for making curves, but there's a price you pay for that. Let's go ahead and start with the linear fill. I'll click on that. And look how beautifully that fills in. Those are all very much evenly spaced. They're in really nice rows and it looks good. But if I click off of it, you're gonna notice up here, this curve isn't perfect. So sometimes for shapes or letters with curves, I'll click back on it, people like to use radial fill. So let me click on that. And now you can see how beautiful the radial fill fills in curves. Now what I think radial fill does is it puts rhinestones around the perimeter and then it starts working its way in, doing another row of rhinestones. It keeps coming in, 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 and then once it gets to the middle, it can't keep doing that, so it just places some randomly. And that's the price you pay because you have some gaps. Now you can try to fix those gaps or minimize those gaps. And I wanna show you a couple ways to do that. Now the first thing that you have to do to be able to kind of manipulate these is go ahead and click back on your shape and then say release rhinestones. Releasing the rhinestones makes it where you can work with each stone individually. And you can tell they're released because there's a little box around each one. Now the first way that you can kind of fix this is just dragging those stones around manually and trying to get rid of those gaps. Oh, 
Okay, so that already looks better. Now, if you want to try to have equal spacing in the gaps, here's another thing you can do. So I'm going to start about right here, and I'm going to start selecting stones that are horizontal to it going this way. So I'll click on that first one, hold the shift key down, and then I'll just start grabbing stones in a line, or pretty much in a line. Then I release the shift key. I go right up here to Object, Align, and Space Horizontally. When I click this, watch what happens. All those gaps are distributed equally, and to me that just looks a little bit better. Now notice this big gap here. Let's try it again. Click on one, hold the Shift key down. Some of this is a judgment call as to which ones you grab. I've released the shift key, so again, go to Object, Align, and Space Horizontally, and it spaces those out. Let's do one more line right here. Now when you do this, the first stone and the last stone stay put and the ones in the middle rearrange themselves. Okay, so you can change them manually, moving them around, or you can grab a bunch and space them horizontally so that the spacing is equal. Now maybe you want to add some stones. Like down here, you don't want to space all those out. That's too big of a space. So I'm going to pick a stone, hit Command-C for Copy, Command-V for Paste, and I'll paste a few there. So I'll just grab one, place it here. I'll grab another one. Let's just place it here. Now those are overlapping. That won't work. And then down here, that's kind of close. There's more space in these other stones than there are right here, or than there is right here. So I'm still going to use that same concept I used before. Pick a stone, start grabbing stones close to it. Again, there's no magic number. You just kind of do it the way you think it'll look good. Go up to Object, Align, and Space Horizontally. Now let's see if it fixes this right here. So I could either start here and then jump up, or I could start here and kind of jump down. I'll just go up here, pick one, hit shift, start grabbing these stones. I think that's enough, so I let go of shift, hit object, align, and space horizontally. And that looks so much better. Now, in addition to spacing horizontally, you can also space vertically. Okay, so I added this one. I'm going to select it, hold the shift key down. Now I'm going to go more in a vertical fashion. I have a bunch of stones selected, so I go to Object, Align, and this time I'm going to click on this space vertically. and it spaced those out so that they're not overlapping and your Cricut could cut it. All right, so that looks much better than when we started. There's still some things to fix. I really just wanted to introduce you to the tools that you use. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Now we're gonna do a word. So I'm gonna click over here on this A, that's the text tool. And then I'll come back over to my canvas. Now I'm going to do all caps, so I hit the caps lock, and I'll type the word Jeep. Now let me go ahead and select this and just drag to make that larger. On mine, each square is an inch. And so I'm really using that to determine the height and the width of my design. Because look at all this extra space up here. Now you can either just use the grid, or what some people will do is they'll go to Object, 
and convert to path. But once I do that, I cannot change my text. So before I do that, I want to come right up here to the text tool. And I want to go up to Arial Block. I use that a lot for my rhinestone templates because it gives you so much surface space to put rhinestones in. All right, have to make sure my whole design is selected. Now I can try to put rhinestones around the edge. And then again, I'm going to go ahead and change those to a color that I can work with. Let's go ahead and do orange this time. Then I click off of it and I see those. Let's go down to the rhinestone tool again. And let's just look and see what it looks like if I do a linear fill. Now I have to select the word Jeep first, then let's go ahead and see what it looks like to do the linear fill. And actually I think that looks pretty good. Now so far I'm using 975 stones, but let's say I want to make this narrower because it's pretty wide. I decreased to 928, but I'm only at one, two, three and a half tall. I want it to be more like five and a half tall. That's close enough. Now I'm up to 1319. Now I think this looks pretty good, but I want to show you one thing. Let's pretend like I really didn't like how the P came out because of the curves. What I can do is with the whole thing selected, I can go object, ungroup. Now I can work with each letter individually. So I'd click on that P and then I'd say, let's do a radial fill. Notice the curves are so much prettier. But again, I have a lot of work to do. Now, you might be okay with doing all that work, but for me, I'm okay with that P right there, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Now, one thing I notice is you're short a rhinestone here. You have a couple of options over there. So I'm gonna click on the J and I'll say release rhinestones. Let's move that over so we can see it better. First option is pick a rhinestone, do Command C for copy, Command V for paste, and then I'm just going to use the arrow keys and move that over to the left and then move it up. I like to use the arrow keys because they're more precise than just dragging it. And I could fix it that way. But maybe I feel like that makes the tail of the J go too tall. So here's how it did look. Instead of adding another stone, I could just grab those stones. Now what I like to do when I'm grabbing just a limited number of stones is I like to change the color of them to make sure I have the stones I want. Because it's easy to accidentally grab extras or miss one. So I go back to the color palette, just change them another color, I can see I have the right stone selected, so I'm going to hit the delete key. Now, I think that looks pretty good already. I'm pretty happy with that, with one exception. Look how big this space is between those two. So I'm going to select all these stones, and then I'm going to go ahead and use my right arrow key, move them over just a little bit. Now, I never release the rhinestones in the E's or the P. So what I have found helps me with saving these templates in a way that they go into Cricut pretty easily is I have everything selected. I'm going back to the rhinestone panel and I'm going to release all those rhinestones. Now that they're all released, I'm going to say object. I'll group all of them together. Then one more step, go to object and say make compound path. Now I can either leave them transparent or I can go ahead and add color back. Now, not everybody does it this way, but this is the way that I have found that they go into Cricut more seamlessly. It doesn't go in as such a huge design. It doesn't take as much time to get into Cricut. It's just what works for me. You might find something else that you like. So now it's time to save this as an SVG. And I want to save it with my dimensions. 
So you see it's 10.837 wide by 5.134 tall. So I'll go up and I'll say File, Save As, and I want to save it to my hard drive. Now I'm going to change the format to an SVG. Then I'll put the dimensions in the name of the file. Then I'll just save this as Jeep. And then to put the dimensions, I'll put 10.837 by 5.134. And I'll say OK. And then I want it on my desktop. Now let's go ahead and go to Cricut and make sure this comes in OK. So I'll close this out. I've already saved it, so now I can say discard all. And I'll open Cricut. All right, let's go ahead and say New Project, Upload, Upload Image. Now I can either say Browse and go look for it, or I can find it on my desktop and drag it over. So that's what I'll do. And there it is. It came in just that fast. So now I'll say Upload. This might take just a little bit longer, but it still won't be too long. It uploaded, I'll click on it, and I'll say Add to Canvas. Now, most of the time, these do not come in at the right size. Now, this one pretty much did come in at the right size. It's 10.836, mine was 10.837. This third digit isn't a big deal, but here's what I can do. Let's lock the proportions. I'll just change that to a 7 and hit Enter. Now notice that minuscule difference, it's still at 5.134. So at this point, this would be ready to cut. So if you're a beginner making rhinestone templates, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. And until my next video, bye-bye.